Uh, welcome back into this uh, second video in our, our uh, lecture on, on data wrangling. And here we're going to talk about uh, the idea of wide versus long data and kind of this idea of formatting data. Um, so again, we've, we've I've assumed at this point that, that you have data that's kind of gone through the basic first round of wrangling and the fact that I mean, all, all cells have been filled in, all, all column headers are defined. Um, but you have data that you know may be coming in from another source that could be in a, a variety of formats. And one format that data is often comes in is is in a kind of a wide format. And what makes data wide is that some dimension of the data is repeated across different columns. So here, you know, we have columns that set up, you know, dates, and then I have uh, data. This data is on uh, ma daily maximum temperatures from NOAA weather stations. Uh, different station IDs as different columns. Um, yeah, this is why, uh, why data is a particularly common format to come across data in because it can often be a data format that's easy for data entry. So if you have, uh, you know, you're fill, you know, continuing to update data sets, you know, it's, it's often easy to enter data in a wide format. Uh, for example, here, if, if no one had update this file format, with a, a new observation for a new day, they just need to append that new day's observation on the bottom. Um, and it's, you know, it seems fairly straightforward. I would note that this, this particular version of wide data that we're looking at here by location is also common. Um, and it, but it's not actually technically tidy uh, because we actually have a, a variable, you know, our station ID actually represented as, as a different columns instead of one column to indicate station ID. Here's the same data reorganized, again, in a wide format, but now it's wide by time, where you know, you know, now each row is a station and each column is, is a point in time. So each row is essentially a time series of data at that location. Again, a very easy, often easily formatted for data entry, but not necessarily optimized uh, for analysis. Um, so yeah, an alternative to wide data where you have some dimension in, you know, time or location or replicate, uh, you know, as uh, different columns. Um, in long data, um, we've instead said set it up so that we have uh, here we have time as a column, but we also have station as a column. Uh, and then our, our response variable, in this case, T max, gets its own uh, column as well. And you know, as contrast to the two other versions of of tidy of Y data that we looked at in the last two slides, um, that uh, we, we've actually now made explicit what the variable in the data set was. That was actually uh, ambiguous. It, uh, it was kind of, would have had to have been in the metadata. In general, um, long data is typically considered to be easier for analysis. Uh, but it's not as compact. So you'll, you know, if you think about this for a while, that um, you know, the date is repeated many times, uh, and the station ID is repeated many times. So you know, the next for the next day, I'm repeating the same station ID. So long data, if it's very complete with not very miss, not much missingness, can often be larger in size. Uh, but it's often you know, more easy to get into most uh, statistical tools and visualization tools. Uh, also note that there, that are, there are functions in R that allow you to easily move uh, between these long and wide formats depending on what is needed for any particular analysis. So for example, uh, I can think of this idea of, of pivoting from one uh, data structure to another. And so if I had that the Y data we were looking at before, and, and particularly if I had the, the location Y version where each column was a different station ID, I could start with the name of that table, table which columns I want to turn into rows, which is located by columns. And here I'm using the idea of uh, minus sign to indicate um, the columns I'm dropping. So I'm essentially saying I want to, I want to pivot all of the columns except the first four, which were the ones that had the date information in it to it. Uh, the names, <clears throat> now what I want to turn those headers, which were the station IDs, what I want to turn that column name into, 
calling it station ID. And then what the, all the values that were in the, the table, what do I, what variable name do I want to give those? So uh, this table here in, in the long format uh, was created by applying this pivot longer function to that wide data uh, table before. That's uh, you know, relatively straightforward. And the other thing that's important to note uh, is that you would, you would not want to do this by hand. Like if you had wide data uh, in, in a table, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to try to change the shape of that data in Excel uh, or, or any other spreadsheet software. This is far simpler to use code to do this. It's an example of you know, why code can make data analysis uh, much, much simpler. Here's another example of a long data format. Uh, it's similarly uh, meteorological data where we've got a date, we've got station IDs, but now in addition to having that Tmax data, we also have data on Tmin, TDP, and precipitation. Uh, so that we need to have, we have added a column for what what met variable we're looking at. We've added a column for what what the value of that uh, data is. So it should be noted that even though this is this is in in long format, uh, we would I would argue that it's not actually tidy uh, because values now contain multiple variables. So so you know you'd have to look at proc to know you know that what the value of these variables are and what units they come in. It makes it harder to have metadata about those things. Um, and so, yeah, you've kind of violated that assumption. So I, in a, more, a more tidy format would be have Tmax, Tmin, TDP, and uh, precipitation as their own columns. So if I had data like this and I want to convert it to being a more tidy format, um, again, I can use functions in R to do that. So in this case, uh, I'm pivoting the data, but now I'm pivoting to make it wider. I'm not necessarily going to make it completely wide. I could use this function to make it, to take it back to the location wide or the time wide uh, format. But in this case, what I want to do is take it to this, this more tidy format, to a more tidy format. Um, so I'm going to give the name of the table um, and then uh, the column name, names that's going to become the header. So I'm going to look in the proc column and turn you know, the four unique values there into, you know, four columns. And then I'm going to fill those columns in with the data in um, this column value, so where I'm getting the data values from. And if I apply that function, uh, I've now converted this to a data set that's a little bit wider, um, but it's really just wider because I've now, I'm representing different variables as different columns. Um, yeah, and you can also again see the, the use of NAs in this data set to indicate uh, data that was not available, so missing data, as opposed to just leaving the cells blank. So now we have tidy data and we can move on to thinking about how we work with this data to dive into it further. <laughs> 